Hello, good evening, and welcome back. One day to go. Against all the odds, we will still mark this momentous occasion of the UK finally leaving the European Union. We will be free once again. We will have our Independence Day, and we will celebrate it because it is worth celebrating. They can try and stop us from the Big Ben, fireworks, alcohol, live music, anything that you would consider to be a party. They can try and stop that, but that will not stop us celebrating. So as we have from the Daily Mail, this is the real Brexit party. Nigel Farage promises to celebrate Britain's long-awaited EU exit in style tomorrow, despite no Big Ben's bongs and no booze. So we'll actually all remember it. Fantastic. The United Kingdom will leave the European Union at the Olympia tomorrow evening after three years of wrangling. Boris Johnson will mark the major occasion with a Downing Street light show as well as a countdown clock. Union flags are being put up across Whitehall ahead of the departure date with them all heavily decked out. Nigel Farage will host a Brexit celebration outside Parliament. The booze, live music and fireworks have been banned. So yes, it is the Union flags. We are including Scotland, even though, according to one latest poll, 51% want to leave just about um, whether or not they realise that it would mean joining the EU and also the, the Euro because of it is yet to be determined um, if they would actually be for that. Or maybe it's saying, uh, well, Boris Johnson is, isn't great, but the EU might be better, but whatever, <laughs> we don't want Nicola Sturgeon. Or maybe it's just saying Nicola Sturgeon is awful, but the EU is slightly better. So a defiant Nigel Farage today insisted Brexiteers will have a good time at his Brexit party despite a ban on booze, live music and fireworks. The Brexit party leader claimed the establishment had done everything it possibly could to make the event in Parliament Square tomorrow night a damp squib. Let's see how British London is tomorrow then. But he said none of that matters and the restrictions would not stop him and his fellow Leave voters from marking a remarkable piece of history. And also of course Remain voters who have decided well yes actually Leave is a good idea. Project Fear was an embarrassment and abhorrent, and all the lies that they espoused are not worth buying into, and therefore it is worth leaving. We would much rather have our own sovereignty. This little rock <laughs> in the Atlantic Ocean that has achieved so much over the centuries and can stand up on its own, even if people don't have faith in us to be able to come through it, despite <laughs> fighting through two world wars, our little rock has stood the test of time and will continue to do so. Hopefully, we can be British again. It's okay to be white, it's okay to be British. We can celebrate these things and enjoy our patriotism. And hey, I'm, I'm all for uh, fly past, <laughs> try and get some, some old warbirds licensed, <laughs> get them to buzz Brussels as well, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> he told the Mail Online, everything that could be done to make the event dance group has been done by the establishment. <coughs> From Big Ben, which was able to bomb the member with Sunday and the New Year, to no fireworks and no alcohol. But you know what? None of that matters. We are there to mark and celebrate two things. One, a remarkable piece of history, and two, the victory of ordinary people against the political establishment. It can rain if it wants to, does not matter. <laughs> that would make it feel so very British. We have a, a wonderful sight with, of course, Buckingham Palace in the background, which surely is there to say, so, okay, if you do have a non-democratically elected leader, then they are there of state, sure, but they're much more emblematic and more of a symbol than actually meddling in regular day-to-day -day affairs and definitely not the highest court in the land um, deciding about the, the rights that you get when you have them both for the people who are then deciding how you get to live. And of course, Grillies with the Second has done a fantastic job in this through her decades as a reigning wife. So, <laughs> big shoes to fill, Charles. We even have the London taxi getting involved. Yes. Parliament Square was also today being ready for the Brexit night celebrations as workers put up dozens of Union flags. What a lovely sight. Romanians have accused Brexiteers of gloating over their victory, but some US skeptics are expected to stay away from public celebrations. <laughs> Maybe they're a bit scared of the violence that will come out. And here we have Brussels Grand Place displaying the Union Jack colours during an event called Brussels Calling, sponsored by the capital city. Trying to say, well, yes, we can have French for the UK, probably because they realise that if they don't, they will be fucked. And the Stop Brexit Man, let's ignore him. There will also be events to mark Brexit in Brussels with Green MEP Magic Magic hosting a Brexit's shit, but let's party anyway, gathering in Plaster Luxembourg. Well, hey, we're not that different after all then. We're, we're seeing it as a, as a time to 
to party, maybe you're not celebrating and maybe you just wish to be a traitor to the country, in which case, sure, if you're gathering in West Luxembourg, then stay there, and then you get to stay in Europe, why not, before the visa situation becomes an issue for you, even though we all know that you can all afford a visa to travel to the, the continent, whereas the, the people who can't are um, quite annoyed at people coming over here and <laughs> essentially getting in the way. As you now have about one in seven people in the UK not born here, and over a third of newborns born by immigrants, at least one parent being an immigrant. So, yes, Britain for the British. So the event tomorrow night is likely to be different in time to Mr. Farage's, which was given the go-ahead by the Greater London Authority earlier this month. Yes, they, they can probably have live music. And the alcohol ban is because Parliament Square has an, is an alcohol restriction zone, so you can't drink outside unless it's in the beer garden of a licensed premises. Yes, indeed. Uh, you, you can't, and they've decided to not lift that ban for the evening. So they say um, we want you to make we want to make you aware that Westminster is a controlled drinking zone, so it is advisable that you do not bring alcohol at all. It's basically if you have any open bottles, closed bottles, that's fine because of course you're just coming from somewhere to somewhere else. But if it's open, then no. And it doesn't mean you can't be drunk uh, because of course you can drink beforehand and then get there and not consume any alcohol slowly, sober up. But you are not, you don't have any open bottles while you're there. But then you'll still be done for being drunk and disorderly. And there are many ways to get around the laws of. Uh, <laughs> Well, obviously, you can't drink dry, that's quite obvious, uh, for, for reasons of impairing your judgement. But then, just not being able to be drunk while walking on the street, because then you're drunk and disorderly. Um, now, that's an offence as well. So, uh, freedom, yeah! Maybe one day. And good old Churchy, overlooking the Union flags. What would he say about it today? Well, we kind of know, don't we? We don't talk to his grandson about that. So Boris Johnson would of course be making a speech as well to ring in the independence as he is expected to address the nation tomorrow night before the clock strikes 11pm. There will also be a countdown clock to the moment of departure with the Downing Street light show also planned. And also bear in mind, if you go to your local Weatherspoons, they will have cheaper drinks to celebrate as well, because good old Martin is a fan of Brexit as well. So <laughs> go celebrate there! In a sign that the government wants to move on from the UK's departure from the bloc as quickly as possible, it is understood there will be no Brexit-related ministerial activity over the weekend. In fact, the government is expected to keep quiet on Brexit until the PM delivers a major speech at some point next week when he will set out his plans for trade negotiations with the EU, which is in their best interest to agree to. Summing up the PM's desire to move on from Brexit and focus on other things, one government source today said flatly, Brexit will be done on Saturday. Perfect. Well, that's it. One day to go. <laughs> Twelve the night before Christmas. So, stay safe. I'm sure there'll be riots all around, particularly in Manchester. So I'll <laughs> stay and stay safe. Or maybe it will actually be a, a nice time to be able to go to work with Wellesmoons well, and it won't be um, socialist university students. Actually, they'll be saying, oh, this is good, we get <laughs> cheaper drinks. It's like, yeah, capitalism, woo, <laughs> Brexit, yeah. That's, that's how we can now decide our prices more freely and actually lower the cost of production and make it more available. We can set away together. Which one they say, oh no, we should collectivize it. Go, oh no. Go to China, which is so, so good, so well managed, that it's now in lockdown. And <laughs> we're in province, seeing as now the coronavirus has gone global for human to human contact as well. Even so that the World Health Organization has declared it uh, an, an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> just like the Zika virus, or Ebola, or swine flu, which was responsible for getting 200,000 people. But yes, Ebola made it twice. So anyway, that's, that's it for me for now. Let's enjoy our celebrations tomorrow, and update tomorrow, of course, as we ring in the new era of the United Kingdom. United, but independent. So until next time, have a good one.